Let me see. All right. Apple versus stuff. <laughs> There's all kinds so, of stuff going on. It's similar as we've, we've gone from iWorld to Apple versus the world. <laughs> versus stuff. That's awesome. Well, it, 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 well, think about it for a minute. That, that is that's the evolution of our show. Seriously. We used to just like iWorld, positive, app. Now it's just well, Apple versus the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's kind of what Apple as the company has done, you know? It's... It, it, they went from a versus thing to just pretending nothing else exists. I mean, it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, and, and and really, that's what all of these stories are. All of these stories are Apple versus something. In some cases, they're winning against the something, and in other cases, they're losing against the something. <laughs> Uh, they outpaced Samsung and phone sold, but they lost to the, the patent lawsuits, and now they're heavily under fire for the uh, working conditions. Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah it, uh, for those of you who have, have been living under a rock, Samsung won their appeals, basically, everybody's agreed. No, Samsung didn't rip Apple off, they didn't do anything. What, why they may have, why they in some ways may have imitated the sincerest form of flattery, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's still Android, it still works like Android, they're not duplicating iOS, there's, uh, it, it's so, yeah, it, it's, it's basically going, your blue looks like my blue, <laughs> and the courts have ruled in that favor. It, it, I personally do not like the tweaking that Samsung's doing. Like, I mean, there's people who've wrote a theme for Android to make it look exactly like iOS in terms of the theming. And it's like, why? Why? What's the matter with you? Why? It's, it's like the people who try and make KDE look exactly like Windows. Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> well, I, I can tell you why. They, they, they would like to bring users from Windows. And they don't want to, they realize that drastic change does not attract users. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, but see, the problem you inevitably wind up with uh, for the, I, and I would think you'd wind up with the same problem on an Android platform. If you make Android look exactly like iOS, people are going to sit down in front of it and try and use it like iOS. And the reality is, the usability, the functionality, they're different. You know, why iOS has added features like the scroll down menu that Android's had for a while, they're still different. You do things different ways on each platform, and you don't, it, it, to me, that's making it harder for them. You know, the same thing with making KDE look exactly like Windows. It's a Linux system. You don't have a C drive. You don't have a D drive. It, you know, when you do that, everybody runs around looking for the C drive and the A drive, and the, it's like, where's my drive? We don't have them. They're in a media or 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 it's like you know they're in a root style file system. You need to get used to that over here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, um, so yeah. I hear you. All right. A anyways, so, no, I find the working conditions one funny. You, you yeah. want to lead off on that, that one? That's not the first time. I'm, I'm sure Apple's gonna have to go over there. But like, Apple's on top now, so they're gonna get the most scrutiny. Well, but this is talking about people. This isn't talking about the China people. This is talking about the people like actually working for Apple. Apple. Wait a minute. Which one? Which link are you on? Selling your soul. Oh, I haven't clicked on that one. Yet. All right. <laughs> oh, and how? I, and, and oh, oh, I remember. I remember this. Yeah. What is it like to work at Apple? Let's see. Well, let's kind of go over this article. Let's kind of go over this. I mean, when you think about working at Apple, you think about what honestly Google is today. You know, it's fun. You're a geek. You get to have. That's not working at Apple. That's. that's you describe. It's a, okay, I guess the question is: You describe a culture of extreme secrecy and insularity. Is Apple a cult? And the answer is: I think cults is too strong a word with a negative connotation. It's like Jim Jones. That man screwed up, I guess, the other word. Well, uh, and, 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 and I agree. The There's life after Apple, for sure, but there are cult-like aspects to it. To be specific, employees who join other companies retain more of their own personalities. When you join Apple, it's understood that you you are more or less giving up 
their personality in adopting Apple's personality. That's what you can see. That's, that's. Apple, uh, Apple employees don't get to talk with outsiders or media about their work at Apple or even that they work at the company. What's so cool about a company that you can't even brag to your friends about working at? The answer, I guess, there's, a, there's the pride and the satisfaction of knowing that you're contributing to something great. I, 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 I'm everyone. just thinking of Get everyone. Smart in the Cone of Silence, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. You can ask the same question with someone who the CIA. What's the good if you can't brag about, uh, about brag that you're a spy? It seems a little silly, but it is. Apple and Pro. Well, see, isn't that crazy, though, that he would actually use the analogy of the CIA? I, I, that's just Well, and really, that, that would apply more to the NSA these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just got the scene of, a, of an employee in a bar looking around and seeing everyone using an iPhone. The downside is you don't get to job. Maybe on, that's job why these that. guys keep losing iPhones in bars. That they're like trying. To, I work at Apple's. Pay attention to me. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It says, what, what, "What is Apple's attrition rate like? It's relatively low. I can believe that because I think they do retain their talent." Yeah. Oh, I, I think they pay their people well. The reality is, people yeah. put up with a lot of crap if you pay them well for their talent. Sure, they do. I, look, it can't be that. I mean, look, you. I, I used to work for Xerox. That was pretty regimented. It was pretty regimented. Yeah. It wasn't secrecy with Apple, but it was regimented. Um, well, and I mean, you hear about the Microsoft, things. Microsoft. Microsoft was like working for, for like a, a fun park. When I the contract, when I see it as a contract, it's like a six-month deal. I, I, I would think the independent contractors probably have a lot more leeway by nature of being independent contractors. I mean, you, you hear about things going on like Apple, well, the light's on, don't look at my screen. It's like, it's, it's like really? It's just, uh, this is one of the reasons I tend not to worry about Google. I, I, I worry about Google a little. As long as Google is allowing their people to be nuts, I, I, I don't worry about Google. It, it's, but the moment that attitude changes, the moment Google makes that transition from, you know, the people get to have fun to the people have to be cogs in the Google the machine, I'm going to get very worried about Google. <laughs> Because Google has their tentacles and everything, and I don't want people who are wound up like that yet. No. <laughs> it says there's 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 this mis or it says it's that recruiter that, that recruiters and recruiting engineers say it's relatively difficult to get engineers out of Apple. There's this mythical Apple engineer who's dreamt of working at Apple since their first Macintosh. Those people have a sense of mission, and they don't believe. It. If employees wash out at Apple, they wash out quickly. I can believe that. They realize right away that it's not for them, and you can think of it as a hazing period. Here's another question. You write that Apple has worked hard to create small project teams and cut middle management. Do Apple employees actually feel like they escaped the bureaucracy of working at a big company? Here's the answer. It's a mixed bag. If you're somebody who's been plucked from uh, what you're doing to work on a global project, then yes, you, you uh, operate in this splendid isolation of a startup but with the resources of the world's second most valuable company. I think I think this is the magic that's completely eluded other big companies. That's perhaps, you know, because Xerox was really, oof, a lot of ways. Well, that, in a way, that's what the Palo Alto Research Center was when Xerox was in charge of it. Uh, and it, it, the reality is there aren't a lot of companies that have the equivalents of those anymore. Rather, they're in house or out house or whatever. You know, that's. Yeah, and then see, here's interesting because I know people that work at the Apple stores and say it's, <laughs> but, you know, really, really regimented. The uh, and, and that's kind of what it's saying here at the bottom. We'll skip a little bit. Other people in the organization tell me that Apple is every bit as stodgy as any big company, and this is particularly true if you're working in one of the more mundane parts of the company, like customer service or the less glamorous products like Mac software. Now that's interesting, Mac software. Then that, that, isn't that an inside line of where Apple's taking the Mac? Look at, an, an Apple employee just equated Mac software with mundane. Wow. Depending what they're doing with it, that's, 
you know, that could be. You know, some software development, just like some web design, it's like, you go, you, you, like, Please shoot me just for something entertaining. Please. <laughs> yeah, this is the unhealthy part. I don't like about it. You're right about Apple's intense and narrow focus on just a few products. When the iPhone ends up taking uh, uh, precedence over the Mac operating system, doesn't that cause dissension among among employees? Things haven't changed. I can tell from history. There's no question. It feels like crap. Institutionally, Apple doesn't care about your feelings. Of course they don't. <laughs> I'm sure that there are human beings who care, but the ethos of the organization is, is to not be concerned about you, about how you feel, about the assignment given to you. And there's a reason for this. Shareholders don't necessarily care about whether you feel good this morning. <laughs> they care about whether you're kicking, you're kicking ass and making an iPad. It's good. It's almost like this old company town on steroids. But see, he's missing, I think, a vague question. I think it's a serious problem when you do have dissension among employees when it's a team versus a team. Um, how do engineers and technical employees well, get And a number of people thought that was a bad idea back in the 80s, you know, where you had project versus project, and uh, that's, yeah. Yeah, here, check this out. Uh, where do Apple employees come from? And this guy goes, it varies by function. Well, first we hatch an iPhone, and then we make yeah. a <laughs> Jobs, it, it says, that's true. Job seeking management had stayed with him for a very long time. Many of them came from next, true. And the ones who hadn't had already been at Apple uh, when he got there. Said, oh, check it out. Yeah, the company is full of paradoxes. No kidding. No shit. Well, true. Jobs and the people around <laughs> have a software engineering liberal arts major bent about them. Many of the people who work on the operational side of the company under Tim are from I B M. Wow, that's, that's a turning page for Jobs as well, I'm sure. Yeah, considering that you know, what did Jobs used to think IBM once upon a day? <laughs> you know? yeah, well, I mean, Tim Cook's been there for a long time. I, I, I know. Like, oh, that's reiterated, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I write, I, write about, I write about the combination of, uh, of the software engineer and liberal arts. That's... Uh, Embroiled perfectly in Scott Forstall. He's an okay guy, though. I don't think he's. Uh, he was a teenage despie. He's the nerd who can communicate well, which is an invaluable skill at now. Right. Yeah. Clear career development. That's interesting, actually. That is interesting. I, well, do they not have a sense of security of retirement for someone that works there, I guess? It's a radical notion because business schools teach you that you want to do is develop your people, expose them to other things. Think about companies that move their managers around the world so they can become broader and better. And Apple rejects that. Wow. Okay. So I'm not judging this, but you can see where this leads to excellence. Hmm. Well, if you're not if you're not bettering your people, I, I'm confused. I guess by what he meant by that. This is your expertise. Why should? Why would I want to stop giving the company that benefit? Yeah, but see, the thing of it is, is that I don't want it. If I can expand my program expertise, well, uh, there's there's another there's another problem with that, and this is actually done in a lot of companies in the last fifteen years, where what they're doing is they're they're not grooming their lower management and entry level people. And so what happens as their middle management, upper management retire out, the company has nobody to take their reins. And the company kind of starts to, uh, and that, if Apple really is doing that, that means it, it, they're not going to last because it, it, what happens is eventually it's time for the next group of people to take the reins and they don't have the skills necessary to do so. Yeah, in other words, it's, for you, as a as a producer, aren't absorbing a huge opportunity cost. And, and in other words, you're you're going to just be good at that one thing. That, that would have never worked for me. You know, doing uh, IT stuff. You have to expand your horizon. Um, I guess the last one, Jobs is infamous for berating employees. Everybody knows that. Well, yeah, and but like, Jobs all this isn't guy like... does is just say, "Yep, it goes beyond Jobs," and it's tolerated. Wonderful. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. <laughs> That's just wonderful. Uh, honestly, the two things I think uh, for them to survive they need to change are these last two. 
the not developing their people because the reality is they're going through a transitional step. They need people to develop to be able to survive to take those transitions that are going to happen. And uh, y yeah, the berating. It, it, you know, it, that's one of the things Apple could do without. Apple could do without the dark jobs. <laughs>